Okay, we are now live. Welcome back, guys. Another question and answer session for you guys. We love doing these as well. Uh, I learn something every single time, so let's uh, take some questions. Perfect. All right, we're starting off. We have Alex Martini. She wants to know, for a tummy tuck, is it better to get it done after you have kids? If you do get pregnant after, will there be complications? Uh, no complications if you get pregnant after a tummy tuck, but pregnancy obviously stretches out the abdomen, so it can undo some of the tummy tuck results. In the ideal uh, world, yes, you would have uh, all your pregnancies, all your deliveries, all your kids, and then have your tummy tuck, and then obviously be done with it. However, that's not always the ideal case for each individual because some people may have had weight gain, weight loss prior to being married, prior to having kids. And so for them to have um, kids, they might, might take them another five years or 10 years down the road if they're young. So they would be living with whatever tummy issues they have for another five or 10 years and then have kids and then have a tummy tuck later on. So short answer, yes, in the ideal world, have a tummy tuck after you have kids. However, that's not always feasible. So you can always have a tummy tuck before you have kids and you can always revise a tummy tuck afterwards. No complications of having a pregnancy after a tummy tuck. Right. Amy would like to know, do you have a certain BMI for a plus size tummy tuck? We don't have any BMI or weight restrictions. We've done BMIs in the mid to upper 50s uh, without any complications and with great results. Uh, so we're happy to help. Um, the key is obviously doing it safely and having a great result. Right. Lily W would like to know, do implants imp impact breastfeeding in the future? They shouldn't. So the implant is going to be underneath the breast gland, either whether it's on top of the muscle or underneath the muscle, it's still going to be underneath the breast gland. So your breastfeeding shouldn't be impacted. All right. Teresa would like to know, are you familiar with lipedema and do you do anything different with lipedema patients? Well, we do quite a few lipedema patients, maybe one a week or one every two weeks or so. Um, lipedema is not a completely understood phenomenon. Uh, it seems like if you treat lipedema with liposuction of a certain type in a certain pattern and do a few things in the recovery process, it seems like that treats the lipedema uh, perfectly and permanently. So um, we generally uh, circumferentially treat the structure. We use a couple of different modalities and then we also place drains. That seems to take care of it. Right. Beauty Jemmy would like to know, is sneezing and coughing painful after you get surgery? Uh, if you have a tummy tuck, sneezing and coughing can be a little bit tender because we sometimes bring the muscles back in together if they're separated. And as you're sneezing, you're moving the abdominal wall and that can give you a little bit of discomfort. We've not had uh, an abdominal muscle repair fail, so it might feel like you might ruin something, but uh, we've not had anyone experience that. Mary Liz would like to know, is a plus size tummy tuck the only procedure that you do? No, we do a whole gamut of plastic surgery. So we'll do uh, anywhere from brow lifts, rhinoplasty, face lifts, neck lifts. We'll do breast surgery, reduction lift, augmentation. We do arm lifts, we do back lifts, we do body lifts, we do buttock fat transfer, we do liposuction, we do tummy tucks, we do lip edema treatment, we do thigh lifts. Um, so we basically do the full gamut. Hannah T would like to know, what does board certified mean? That's a great question, a very important question as well. It depends on which certification that you have. So there's a lot of doctors out there that will go to school for, let's say, being a primary care doctor. And then they'll do some weekend courses in cosmetic surgery. You know, maybe they have 8, 10, 15, 20 hours worth of training, which is not a lot. You know, basically a weekend's worth of training. And they'll be board certified by that entity. But that entity doesn't really mean anything. So what you really want to do is you want to get board certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery. So board certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery because that means that that surgeon has had six years of training, not one weekend. Right. Jenny, do you would like to know what is the quickest surgery you have done? That's a good question. So a breast augmentation, if it's fairly uncomplicated, will take maybe... 30, 45 minutes to an hour. So that's pretty quick. Although on it, we'll do like, you know, lipoma removal for, you know, in five or 10 minutes. So those are pretty quick surgeries. In terms of big body contouring procedures, obviously it'll take at least an hour or two to do most tummy tucks, if not three or four, if you're doing some of the plus size patients. Diane Baker would like to know, do you have any diet recommendations for post-surgery from a tummy tuck? Well, most patients don't need nutrition to heal. They have already the nutrition on board. So 
Um, the, the key is to really listen to your body and the body will communicate. Hydration is very important. And then lighter meals is important as well because you don't want blood supply to go to where you're healing, also to your gut to process that food. And if you're taking narcotics, the process through your gut goes a little slower, you can get constipated. So you have to listen to your body. More importantly, try to do lighter meals and um, just really focus more on hydration. JY Glow would like to know, is a plus size tummy tuck done in the hospital? I guess it can be. We have our own plastic surgery outpatient surgery center, fully licensed uh, by the state. Uh, so that's where we do our plus size tummy tucks. Ms. Carol would like to know, what is the difference between a mini tummy tuck, normal tummy tuck, and plus size tummy tuck? Is it just BMI? No, in fact it isn't. So a, a mini tummy tuck, uh, by definition, should only remove skin near the pubic area and it should not do anything with the belly button or above. Now, some people have modified mini tummy tucks so they start doing muscle repair and belly button stuff, but at that point it's a regular tummy tuck. So a regular tummy tuck is basically when you're dissecting from the pubic area all the way to the rib cage, and then you're also managing the belly button and the muscle repair and all that stuff. A plus size tummy tuck is that in a patient that's a higher BMI, so you have to modify your dissection, liposuction, amount of tissue removal, all that stuff. All right, G Stacks would like to know, can a plus size tummy tuck be doable at a 65 BMI? Anything is possible, as long as we can do it safely and do it uh, well, we're gonna go ahead and do it. Now, sometimes for in patients that have uh, quite a bit of tissue and we're worried about the blood supply, you can also stage it, excuse me, I'm gonna cough. <coughs> you can also stage it to improve the blood supply to the area. Or you do a little bit of tissue removal at the bottom, let the blood supply supercharge, and then come back and do the plus size tummy tuck during the second stage. Right. Anna Brio would like to know, how long would the recovery be for an arm lift and thigh lift on a plus size person? Well, the recovery is similar for almost everyone, meaning the first two weeks you wanna focus 100% on your recovery, the second two weeks more of the same, but really try not to do anything um, that you don't 100% have to because you're robbing your body of energy and you're basically splitting your energy between doing what you're doing and then the recovery. No working out for about six to eight weeks. Uh, compression garments for about six to eight weeks as well. Well, Sean would like to know, have you had any deaths? No deaths so far, so we're very grateful for that. We take great pride in uh, really doing our part to educate our patients and do everything that we need to do to uh, make things as safe as possible. So we've not had any deaths. We've not had any emergency transfers to the hospital um, so far, and God forbid, you know, that should happen in the future. You know, surgery is always a little bit risky because there's so many unknowns, but we try to manage those unknowns by proper communication and proper planning. Is there a riskiest um, like surgery? Well, um, you know, you shouldn't operate on people that are not healthy enough to have surgery, and those are going to become the most risky uh, surgeries. And of course, there's a slippery slope where you're actually doing more and more on patients that maybe have more and more issues. Um, so you just have to be careful. Patients that don't have good hearts, good lungs, patients that have prior history of, of interesting problems like blood clotting should be uh, carefully evaluated and managed. Riley Sims would like to know, do you recommend light physical activity after getting surgery? Well, if you're staying properly hydrated, you're gonna be getting up to go to the bathroom consistently, and that should be the, all the activity that you do probably the first two weeks. Uh, and then you can slowly increase your activity beyond that. Great, Ali would like to know, can you do liposuction under local anesthesia? You can, but if you're doing aggressive liposuction or a lot of it, it's gonna be very cumbersome and uncomfortable for the patient. Remember, local anesthesia means just we're putting numbing medication in your fat. So if you're doing a large amount, that means you're putting a large amount of lidocaine or numbing medication into your tissues. And then, and then you can actually become unsafe doing so because so there's something called lidocaine toxicity. So small amounts of liposuction, totally fine to do. Larger amounts in very peculiar areas, you should do it under IV sedation or general anesthesia for better safety. Ben Brockman wants to know if you ever finished your deck. You know, I did not. So, um, um, <laughs> like all things, um, I found one problem, and then as you're working there, you're like, oh, there's more problems. And so, uh, there's something called dry rot. So, I have some dry rot in some of my joists, and I'm starting to replace some of them. But as you're working in there, you realize there's more than initially there uh, was noted to be. And so, I'm working on it. Uh, thank you for uh, following up on that. 
Alma would like to know, do you do multiple surgeries at once? We do multiple procedures on the same patient, and then uh, we also do multiple patients on the same day if we haven't filled out our day. So we generally start surgery at 7, I'll see the patient around 6.30 in the morning, uh, and we'll operate up until about 3 or 4. We've done surgery until 4 or 5, 6, but the staff gets a little bit tired, and then I get a little tired. Uh, so we generally kind of shut it down around 3, 4, 5. Jura Lynn would like to know, how long is the full recovery for a plus size tummy tuck? Can you please break down the timeline? Yeah, it varies. So first two weeks, 100% focus on your recovery. You shouldn't be doing anything else. Second two weeks, more of the same. You shouldn't do anything that you don't necessarily have to do, right? So do you have to go to the grocery store? No, so don't do that. Uh, maybe you have to go to work. Maybe you have to take care of a child. There's no other way to do it. So those things are obviously uh, things that you can't pass along. No working out for six to eight weeks. Uh, no core exercises, maybe for a little longer than that, maybe three months. Um, and so those are the steps that, uh, the progress of plus size time flex. I am Livy would like to know, why do you operate in Arizona? Do you ever consider moving? Um, you know, you can be happy in a lot of different parts of the world. So you never say never, but I love Arizona. Um, great environment, great people, great food. Um, I've been here for 15 years, so I have roots in it. Um, there's lots of open area, and there's also lots of urban area, so you get a, a, a mix of the, of the two. But more importantly, you have to remember that um, the success of surgeries are based not only on what I do, but also what my team does as well. So we have office staff, surgery center staff, anesthesiologists, surgery center, overnight area. All that has been polished and set up over the last 15 years to help us accomplish the results that you see us accomplishing and do so safely. So by operating somewhere else, like in California, I'd have to rebuild all that foundation because that foundation is critical. Mackenzie, Texas would like to know, if I travel to you, for how long would I have to wait in Arizona before I fly home to Texas? Uh, a two-week minimum time frame is a good recommended time frame. Anything earlier than that, you're traveling very tired and, uh, and you're not getting as many follow-ups with me. So two-week minimum. Michelle Shelley would like to know, does loose skin always have stretch marks? No, you can have loose skin without stretch marks. Um, stretch marks are pairs in the skin, but loose skin is loss of elasticity. So usually when you have loss of elasticity, you've done so by weight gain, weight loss, and also pregnancy, and that also sometimes results in stretch marks. But I've seen both. I've seen skin that hasn't lost that much elasticity with stretch marks, and I've seen skin that have really lost a lot of elasticity without any stretch marks. Pauletta would like to know, when is your busiest time of the year? I am grateful for all of the patients that come see us from you know, throughout Arizona, throughout the U.S., and throughout the world. We don't really have a busy season because we don't really have a slow season. We're kind of consistently busy, busy along the uh, seasons and along the um, weeks and months. So there's not a lot of fluctuation in our, in our, um, in our uh, surgery scheduling, in our office schedule. We just kind of stay kind of consistently uh, busy throughout the time. Arizona gets busy during this time of, uh, of the year, you know, so like, you know, November, December, January, February, March, maybe even April. Those are the busy months of Arizona. So you'll notice that um, accommodations are more expensive uh, uh, during that time frame. During the summer months, it's less busy in Arizona. So hotel rooms and rental, home rentals are a little less expensive. Traffic is also a lot better in the yes. summer. All right, Beth Rhodes would like to know, what is the difference between a facelift and a mini facelift? Yeah, so that's an interesting thing about surgery in general. We, need, we use words to communicate ideas, but the idea is the more important part. The word is, a, is a basically a, a method of communication. So you can, call, you can call your surgeries whatever you want to, as long as the surgeon and you understand what we're doing. So if somebody says, hey, I don't like my cheeks, I don't like my jowls, I don't like my neck, but I don't want to have a facelift and I don't want to have a neck lift. I want to have a mini something like that. Fine. Call it what you wish as long as you understand that the surgeon needs access to this structure and this structure. So one person's mini facelift could be another person's full facelift, could, could be one person's cheek lift. So more, the most important part, identify what bothers you, 
make sure that the surgeon communicates what they're gonna do to accomplish that, and then you can label it however you want to label it. Sarah R would like to know, why do you work with plus size patients, but other doctors don't? Well, you know, I like a challenge, first and foremost. I like to learn all the time. So um, every week, every month, every year, we're always learning, we're always doing th things differently. How I do my plus size tummy tuck now is a little bit different than how I did it a year ago, and it's a little different than how I did it five years ago, and it's a little different than how I did it 15 years ago. So I like a challenge, I like to always learn. The patients are incredibly grateful, and I see the profound changes that we're making in their lives. And that's gratifying for our office staff. It's also gratifying for us as well. There's also a little bit of a touch of laziness involved in this whole equation because in the ideal world, I would just come to work and I would do whatever is easy and I would just go home because that's the easiest thing for me. But it's important to always give back. So um, it, doing plus size patients is a lot of work, physically, mentally, um, sometimes even emotionally. And we uh, accept that challenge because it's important to do that work to help our patients. And that's part of the reason why there are so few people out there that are doing the kind of work that we're doing. Do you offer skin removal for patients with controlled diabetes? Yes, yeah, we've done, we do that almost regularly. We've had patients on insulin diabetes control, metformin diabetes control. Medical diagnosis problems are not a problem are not problems if they are controlled. So hypertension, if it's controlled, it's not a problem. Diabetes, if it's controlled, it's not a problem. So we're fine with doing that. How long after gastric bypass do you need to wait for a plus size tummy tuck? It can be variable and that's dependent on the patient because if uh, you have a big amount of tissue and it's getting in the way and you're sick of it mentally and physically, even though you haven't lost all of your weight yet or even a lot of your weight yet, you can get a plus size tummy tuck Obviously, if you're gonna lose 75 or 100 pounds, just know that there's gonna be a little bit of less than tight skin once you're all said and done, but you can always revise that. Just take out a little bit more skin, do a little bit more lipo. You can always revise it and kind of tune up that plus size tummy tuck later on. Hey Jude would like to know, how do you correct excessive skin around the pubic area? Well, I include a pubic lift with my tummy tucks, with my plus size tummy tucks. So that's how you do that. You can do a pubic lift by itself, um, but usually it's not worth it, because once you're basically into doing a pubic lift, you really probably should just do the whole tummy tuck. Stacia would like to know, can tummy tuck scar tissue develop after a year and cause tightness? And how likely is it to grow back after being removed? Well, so internal scar tissue can be created by prolonged inflammation. So let's say you had a hematoma, you had an infection, you had a seroma internally, things that weren't controlled properly during your tummy tuck recovery. The body forms scar tissue naturally from that. And that scar tissue can get tighter with time. So in the ideal world, you go in there, you remove all that scar tissue, and you treat the body right so you don't have that inflammation. And if you do that, then you should be fine. However, if you've had those problems and you had some scar tissue and you feel like ongoing tightness, it, that can happen. And so um, you might, potentially need to go back in there and remove that scar tissue properly. Madeline would like to know, what sparked your passion for plastic surgery? Um, yeah, so you know, it's, life is an interesting uh, journey. You know, you start, take one step and then you're a little further out, then you take more steps and then all of a sudden you're further out yet on that journey. So my journey started, obviously, I was born in Romania and then so I moved here to the United States with my family. and. Um, humble beginnings, obviously my parents didn't go to high school because uh, uh, you know, third world country, you know, if you're poor in third world countries, you generally don't go to school. And so when we came here, uh, the first part of that journey for me was like, hey, I gotta go to college because that's what you do when you come from a you know, different situation like that. So first step, well, I'm gonna go to college and then the, then the next step was like, well, what am I gonna do after college? Where am I gonna major in? What am I gonna do after college? Then I decided med school almost randomly and then once you're in med school, then I go, what am I gonna go into after med school? So then I decided plastic surgery because I love working with my hands and I love anatomy. And I like the creativity of plastic surgery. So as opposed to general surgery, for example, where you follow certain steps to take a gallbladder out. In plastic surgery, everyone's a little different and you do something different for each patient. Then that leads to the next thing and that leads to the next thing. And all of a sudden, then you're doing challenging cases and now you're doing plus size patients and now you're doing challenging plus size patients. So you never know where life will take you. You just kind of go one step at a time. All right, Chica32 would like to know, 
What is the heaviest amount of skin you have removed on a patient in one surgery? Um, I think it was in the 40s, like 40 some odd pounds. Uh, and that was maybe about five years ago. Although last week or the week before that? Last week. Actually, here's a treat for you guys. Last week we removed, I think, 33 pounds. And we just posted that patient's one week post-op photo and video on Instagram. So that's our most recent post. All right, Nat Nice would like to know, I have had three C-sections. Would there be an issue with having a plus size tummy top? There will not. I always remove the C-section incision and the underlying scar with the plus size tummy top. Right. Amanda Panda would like to know, can you do a plus size tummy tuck but also get rid of the back rolls at the same time? You can. The back rolls are oftentimes removed with a bra line back lift. The bra line back lift is a procedure designed to remove back rolls and back fat. It involves an incision across your back right where your bra strap is at. It can be combined with a breast lift because it goes and joins the breast as well or it can be done by itself. Um, I published that procedure back in 2008 with a gentleman named um, uh, Dr. Hunstead. He's now currently retired. Um, and so we've been doing that since the inception of it back in 2008. So a broad line back lift and a plus size tummy tuck work great together to get the best uh, waist contour. All right. Jamie Reagan would like to know, I have an umbilical hernia and a 3.5 DR. Can that be repaired without mesh and a full tummy tuck? It should be and it can be, yeah. Mesh is not needed for those things. So I, um, I, I include hernia repairs with my tummy tucks, like umbilical hernia repairs and things of that nature. Muscle repair automatically repair, uh, repairs the diastasis recti that you mentioned. However, there, are, there is one limitation. If you have a lot of intra-abdominal fat, fat on the meter muscle, then the muscles can be separated. You might have diastasis recti, but there's no space to bring the muscles together. So that's the one limitation that we don't run into all the time, but that is a possibility. All right, Priscilla Flores would like to know, do you lose feeling in your nipple when you get implants? You shouldn't, but it's a possibility. So the sensation to the breast and to the nipple come from a lot of different nerves. And when you make an incision at the bottom, or let's say around the areola, you cut some of those nerves to put the implant in there. Um, depending on which of those nerves are the biggest nerves for you, you might lose sensation, but you usually don't. Tata0317 would like to know, do we have a recovery suite? We do. Uh, we have an overnight um, area for you. After surgery, we include that with our tummy tucks. Tristan would like to know, can visceral fat be removed with liposuction? No, that's a very good question, very important thing. So visceral fat is underneath your abdominal muscle, on your organs. If the cannula goes in there, you're puncturing organs, bowel, stomach, liver, spleen. You cannot and should not liposuction visceral fat. That visceral fat should be lost um, by reduction in what you eat and those things should be um, sugar, alcohol, and processed foods. Those preferentially reduce the amount of fat and chop down on MEH would like to know, do you recommend IV drips for pre and post surgery? You don't need to, you can if you need to, but you should be able to consume enough water. That water should go inside your GI tract. Your body should then absorb that water from your GI tract to go into your vessels. Hydration via the oral route is probably better, but uh, hydration inside your vessel through IV drip can and should be done if you're having a hard time keeping those fluids down. So in the ideal world, you'd be consuming that water, but if you are somehow struggling with that, then IV hydration can be done. Samuel would like to know, how do you get a hernia and how do you know if you have one? Where our abdominal wall is like one big balloon, right? So inside that balloon is our organs. And so the wall of that, a balloon is what keeps our organs in and also when we tighten it, it also strengthens our core so we can pull and push and do physical maneuvers. Anytime you have a penetration in a wall, that's where there's a weakness there, right? So what are the penetrations? Your umbilical stalk is a penetration, right? And then your inguinal areas is a penetration as well. Of course, the center of your abdominal wall is where we fuse, that's an inherent weakness as well. Those are the areas where you naturally have hernias. Now you might have a hernia and the hernia might be asymptomatic. In that case, you don't have to have a fix. If you have pain, if you have a bulge, if you have things of that nature, those are hernias that not only you know you have because of pain and the bulge, but also should be fixed. Jennifer would like to know, are you the only surgeon that operates? 
I'm the only surgeon that operates on our patients, and I'm the only surgeon that operates in our office. There, I don't have any partners. I don't have any associates. We don't have any residents. We don't have any fellows. I do the whole surgery from start to finish. Angie015 would like to know, can a breast reduction and BBL be done at the same time? Yep, totally doable, unless there's other medical reasons not to, but we do that all the time. Okay. Rosa would like to know, do you have an age limit? Uh, no age limit. If you're healthy, then you should be able to have surgery just like you're, if you're healthy and you're 40 and you're healthy and you're 80, there's no problems there. Similarly, if you're unhealthy and you're 40 and you're unhealthy when you're, and you're 80, you shouldn't have any surgery. So no age limit. When you're very young, there's a couple of age limits when you're young because obviously you need parental consent. And two, if you operate on certain structures, those structures are still changing when you're very young. So a little discussion there, but there's really no upper limit to the age. All right, Caroline would like to know, would tracheal slash bronchial stenosis disqualify someone from a tummy tuck? Um, not necessarily. So a tracheal stenosis, meaning you have some scarring in your trachea there. Um, if you're able to breathe just fine, you should be good. There is some concern that if you get innovated, then the tube might not go down through the stenosis. However, if the tube doesn't go through the stenosis, then you shouldn't be, be able to breathe normally. However, there is a bypass to that because you can have an oral airway, a, a, a breathing mechanism that doesn't go into your trachea. It just goes to the back of your throat. That's a better question for our anesthesiologist. But in general, if you're able to breathe okay, you should be fine. G staff would like to know, after surgery, do you stay in the hospital or a recovery house? Um, well, you can do both, but usually uh, we have an overnight um, area that you go into after your uh, a tummy tucks, and that's where that's what we offer. Um, the hospitals uh, also, we have a hospital right across the street, and they have kind of their own um, uh, care facility in there as well. But we prefer to take care of you ourselves because we know better how to do that than the, maybe the hospital does. Elena would like to know, do you listen to music while you're in surgery? We do. Well, I tend to listen more to uh, technical type, techno type music, um, but we listen to a variety of music in there. Um, but mo the channel that we usually put it on when I'm operating is uh, just kind of um, a more electronic type music. So less words, more kind of um, melodies, and that just uh, allows everyone to focus on the surgery and not so much on the words. Grant would like to know, where did you go to school? I went to Portland State University for college, Oregon Health Sciences University for med school, Michigan State University for residency, uh, the Hunstead Center for one fellowship, and then the Marina Plastic Surgery for the other fellowship in LA. Karen would like to know, how long after a C-section do I need to wait for a tummy tuck? Well, I would recommend you wait until Two things happen. One, you're in a good place in your life because obviously you just had a baby, so you know uh, uh, that the baby might be requiring more of your attention as opposed to maybe like your recovery from surgery. And two is when your body really has stopped changing a lot, because sometimes after you have a baby, uh, then your body is still kind of contracting and uh, skin is re skin retraction, things of that nature. So I would wait until things balance out a little bit. That might be three months, six months, whenever you think that that's the best time frame. Simply, Christina would like to know, would you ever operate on a transgender patient? We have uh, quite a few transgender patients, absolutely. Um, I don't do the actual general part of the transgender uh, uh, surgery, but I'll do the body component, or I'll do some facial stuff as well. No fear, just faith would like to know, I have a lap band, can I get a tummy tuck and a LiPo 360, or do I need to get it removed first? No, nope, we've done lots of surgeries on patients that have had lap bands, uh, and I'll actually work around the lap band port. Um, there, there is a potential limitation. I've had a couple of lap band patients where their ports were right in the center, and their, the cord, the tubing from the port to the inside of their uh, abdomen was very short, and so that limited on how much muscle tightening I could do, but it, it's not really an issue. Grace Ann would like to know, are there different styles of tummy tucks? Uh, there's a lot, um, and there's different types of tummy tuck procedures out there, and if you wanted to uh, read about that, you can actually go on uh, Google Books. Um, if you want to go on Google Books, you can put uh, the Atlas of Abdominoplasty, and it'll actually give you chunks of the chapters in the book that I wrote with Dr. Hunstead back in 2008. Uh, if you want to buy it, I guess you can go on Amazon.com. I don't get any of the royalties 
So there's no disclaimer there. But yes, there's lots of them. There's a mini tummy tuck, full tummy tuck, extended tummy tuck, fleur de lis tummy tuck, plus size tummy tuck, reverse tummy tuck, endoscopic tummy tuck. Uh, that's about it. Amy C would like to know where in Arizona is your office located? We are in Scottsdale, Arizona. We're about 10 minutes away from Phoenix Airport. We're kind of where all the cool things happen, you know, like all the restaurants and the bars and everything. So, uh, but yeah, we're in Scottsdale. Okay. And then finishing off, how far out are your consultations? I think consultations are probably about two months out. Our surgery is about two or three. Sometimes that gets expanded to four or five months out. But right now, I think we're about three months out on surgery and maybe about a month or two on consultations or something like that. And then how can someone go about setting up a consultation? That's a great question. Lots of different ways. You can message us here on Instagram or any other, other social media sites. You can also go on drrepto.com, click the virtual consultation or consultation button at the top, and that will, they will then respond to you either by phone or email, whatever your preferred method is, and we can give you better ideas on how far out our consultations are and how far out our surgeries are. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Repta. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.